All right, so today we're really going deep, like deep dive time into the world of John Romero. Yeah, everybody knows the name, right? But I think a lot of folks, they know him for, well, one game in particular, maybe. Maybe you've even yelled at your screen because of it. Daikatana! We've all been there, maybe. But I think there's a whole other side to this guy. So let's rewind the clock a bit. Imagine young Romero, just a kid, 13 years old, totally sucked into those late 70s games. Stuff like Space Invaders, Pac-Man. But for him, these weren't just games. They were like, I don't know, invitations to figure out how they worked, how to make his own mark. And that's what's so fascinating about those early influences. You're uh, talking about a time when game mechanics, they were simpler, more no. transparent. Romero, he could take those experiences apart, really get at the core of what made them tick. And you see that reflected in his level design later on. It's like he was reverse engineering fun. You know what I mean? You see that energy, that creative burst, especially in those early years. 1987, before id software is even a thing. Think about this. He'd already programmed over a dozen games. Wow. Yeah. It's not just messing around. This is a young programmer cranking out games, each one making him better. It speaks to his natural talent, for sure, but the work ethic, too. There's this drive in him, this need to create, and you can see how that leads right to the impact he has later on. And when we talk about impact, there's no bigger stage than id Software, right? Hmm. This is where he teams up with John Carmack. Not just making games, but changing what a first-person shooter could be. Right, Wolfenstein 3D, Doom. And these weren't just hits. They were like earthquakes shaking up the whole industry. Everyone focuses on the tech, which is amazing. But they forget about Romero's level design. It's true. Anyone can learn to code, in theory. But making an experience, the way a player moves, the tension, that's a skill. Totally. And Romero... He got it. A great level. It's not just about shooting stuff. It's about guiding the player moment by moment. Adrenaline, fear, you name it. He knew how to make you feel it. And it's not just the levels themselves. People forget the tools he made. Dune, Quake Ed. These weren't just for those games. They changed how games were made, period. Exactly. Romero knew that for a medium to grow, it have to be open. Doomed, that was an invitation. Anyone with an idea could build their own levels, their own stories, all within those worlds. Back then... That was revolutionary. Democratizing game development, and you can draw a straight line from that to modding today. It's huge. And it's that that open approach, inviting people to push the limits, that sets up what comes next. We talked about his skills, the tech, the levels. But there's this whole other side to Romero, the yeah. showman. Yeah, for sure. This is not a guy to shy away from anything. Not afraid of a little or a lot. Yeah. Of controversy. Yeah. And speaking of, well, we got to talk about Daikatana. Right, Daikatana. For a while there, that was almost all people thought of with Romero. Easy to focus on the hype, the marketing, the reviews. Yeah. But there's context. Absolutely. Back then, the gaming world, we were waiting for his next move. After Quake, it was like, what's he going to do? And that ad campaign, John Romero is about to make you his bitch. Well, it got people talking, that's for sure. Yeah, no kidding. Looking back, maybe a bit much. But even with everything that happened, there are lessons in Daikatana. The whole industry saw what happens when you hype things up too much, when development can't keep up. Became this cautionary tale, you mm -hmm. know, like whispered in game dev studios everywhere. Totally. Nobody wants to repeat that. Daikatana showed that gameplay has got to come first. No amount of hype can fix a game that isn't fun at its core. And maybe those tough lessons, they made things better in the long run. Okay, so Daikatana, not a hit. But here's the thing about Romero. He doesn't give up, gets back up, tries something new. This time, mobile gaming. And you see his smarts, his hustle. Come out here. This is early mobile gaming, right? Most big developers, they're figuring it out as they go. Not Romero. He jumps right in. Monkey Stone Games is born, cranking out games for this brand new market. Bet a lot of people don't even know about this era. It's a cool time because he's messing around with new types of games, new tech, but always keeping that focus on gameplay, making it fun and easy to pick up. Never content to just, I don't know, relax. Whether it was Red Faction on that Nokia N-Gage starting Slipgate Ironworks or the Cyber Athlete Professional League, always looking for the new thing. Don't forget, he tried to get a whole new FPS going for the CPL. Severity, it was going to be called. Never quite happened, but shows you how much he wanted to change competitive gaming. He was there at the start of esports, that's for sure. But for me, what stands out is that even after Daikatana, the passion was still there. That drive to make something. Exactly. And that leads into his later work. Still that same passion, same experimental streak. But now with all this experience behind him, it really is something. You see his whole career, all the twists and turns, but he's always trying to find that next level. Like in 2010, working with Adrian Carmack on Blackroom, trying to crowdfund this whole new FPS. Yeah, Blackroom. Too bad that one ever got off the ground. 
Ad potential, though, you can see the classic Romero DNA in it. Fast action, intricate levels, letting the player really drive the experience. Shows you, even the greats, they hit roadblocks sometimes. But that's what's so great about Romero. He doesn't stop. Could have easily just kicked back, but no. Goes back to his roots, releases Sigil in 2019. Ah, Sigil. Now that, that was something special. Right. Total love letter to Doom. Coming full circle, revisiting what worked, but making it even better with everything he'd learned over the years. For sure. Like, taking those classic levels, the fights, and just elevating them. Yeah. Even if you've played Doom a million times, he still finds a way to surprise you. And it's not just nostalgia bait, either. Sigil proves his influence is still huge. Decades later, he can still make those classic designs grab you. Absolutely. And let's not forget, this is the same guy who just recently made a whole new level for Doom 2. To raise money for Ukraine, no less. Yeah, that's Romero right there, using what he's good at to make a difference. Exactly. So we've covered a lot here, right? From Space Invaders to Date Software, Daikatana, Mobile Games, even Sigil. What a ride, huh? Ups and downs, for sure. But what gets me is how relentless he is. Seen it all. The good, the bad. But he never stopped trying new things, never lost that passion for games. I think that's the thing to take away from all this. It's bigger than just games. Romero shows us what can happen if you don't give up. Believe in yourself, even when it's tough. Failure. It's just another level waiting to be beaten. Next time you're playing a game, think about John Romero. Think about the risks, the things he tried, and ask yourself, what world are you going to build?